Hey guys, Matt here from mksmarthouse.com and in this video we are going to be setting up the software for the home automation server using a Windows computer. As you may have noticed, I did say using a Windows computer because in this video we are going to be setting up the software of the server using a Windows computer. If you are using a Mac, then look in the description for the video using a Mac computer. Please also go ahead and press the like button because of all five videos in the home automation server series hit 200 likes, then I will release the videos on how to actually use OpenAB2 sooner than it is scheduled. First thing we're going to do is put the OS on the microSD card. So go ahead and grab the microSD card, which like I mentioned in the hardware video, should be at least 16 gigabytes and class 10. Anyway, take the microSD card and connect it to your computer either directly or like me and get an SD card reader. Next, we are going to download the OpenHabian image. The link will be over in the guide on the mksmarthouse.com website. Speaking of, this entire guide is available on the website in written form, which I recommend having open alongside this video. So that way you can go to links and type in commands faster. Moving on, go to the link, then scroll down to downloads. Download the Raspberry Pi image by clicking the file called open habian pi with the ending .img. It should download. Then we are going to go to the other link to download Win32 Disk Imager. On the page, click the download button and it should automatically download. Once it is done downloading, open File Explorer and go to your downloads folder. Double click on Win32 Disk Imager to install it. Click run and then yes in the pop-up boxes. Click next, agree to the terms, click next, 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 and then click install. Once it is done, click finish. You should get an error that says unable to execute file. Click OK. Go into the search bar or wherever your applications are and find Win32 Disk Imager. But we have to run as administrator, so right click on it and press run as administrator. Then click yes in the pop-up. First we have to load the image, so click on the folder icon next to the image file field. Go to the downloads folder and double click on the file that starts with open Habby and Pi. Next then device drop down, select the letter of the drive of your micro SD card. If you are unsure, you can go to file explorer and check the letter of the drive. Click right. Now that the OS is written to the micro SD card, take the micro SD card and put it into the Raspberry Pi. The logo on the SD card should be facing down. Then take the other end of the power adapter and plug it in. The Raspberry Pi is now booting and setting up for the first time. Please be patient and set a timer for 45 minutes because it has to expand. Once 45 minutes have passed, the Pi is now booted and ready for us to configure. But before we can access it, we should give it a static IP address so we can access it easy at all times. First thing we have to do is open up a web browser and go to the main router's IP address. Mine is 192.168.0.1 and then log in. Then go to DHCP and DHCP client list. Then look through the list and find open Habby and Pi. Copy its MAC address and head over to address reservation. Click add new and in the MAC address field, paste the Pi's MAC address. There is one more field to fill out and that is the IP address. I put 192.168.0.4 because that is the next available static IP address I have. Click save and in the pop-up box click OK. There will be a little warning saying that it needs to reboot, so click on the thing that says click here and press the reboot button. When the box pops up, click OK. Let the router restart and when it finishes, unplug the Raspberry Pi, wait 10 seconds and then plug it back in. Wait 1 minute for the Raspberry Pi to boot back up. Great. Now the Raspberry Pi is ready for configuration. So the first thing we're going to do is configure the web part of OpenApp. So open up the web browser and go to your Pi's IP address with colon 8080 on the end. You should now see a web page asking which setup you like. We are obviously going to press expert. Now it should be installing our user interfaces. This could take a couple minutes, so be patient. We are now going to configure the rest of the Pi through SSH. And to do that, we are going to need a program called PuTTY. Link to the program will be on my website. Anyway, go to that page and find where it says MSI Windows Installer. And click on the .msi file that corresponds with your system architecture, either 32 or 64-bit. Personally, I chose 64-bit. Open File Explorer, then go to your Downloads folder. Double-click on the .msi file that starts with PuTTY-. 
When the box comes up, hit run. Click the next button two times and then click install. When the box pops up, click yes. Once done, hit finish. Now we are going to open PuTTY, so either search for it through the search bar or go to wherever your applications are and run it. Right click on it and press pin to taskbar so you always have access to it. In the host field, type in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. In the saved sessions field, type in home automation server and press the save button. Click open. Box should pop up saying not cached in registry. Just press yes. In the prompt box, it will say login as. Type in open habian. Now it will ask for the password. Type in the default, which is open habian, and press enter. Congratulations, we are now SSH into the Raspberry Pi. For this part, I recommend having my website up so you can just copy and paste commands. Awesome, now we are in our Raspberry Pi. The first command we are going to issue is sudo space open habian dash config and press enter. It will ask you for a password, so enter the default one, open habian. Next, use the arrow keys and go to update and press enter. Once it finished running the update script, you will be back at the selection screen. Use the arrow keys and go to upgrade system and press enter. Once the script is complete, use the arrow keys and go down to Mosquito and press Enter. Then on the screen, while Continue is highlighted, press Enter. We will not be using MQTT authentication, so use the arrow keys and go over OK and press Enter. It should now be installing our MQTT server. When it is done installing, press Enter over OK. And then back on the selection screen, use the arrow keys and go to exit and press enter. It should give you a warning that we didn't change the password. So we are now going to change some passwords. I recommend using the same new password for the next two things. The first thing is the sudo slash ssh password. So type passwd and press enter. We are now going to change the password. So enter the default password open habian and press enter. Then enter a new password and press enter. Then confirm that password by typing it in again and press enter. It should say updated successfully. We are now going to change the Samba password. I will explain what this is later. Anyway, type in sudo smbpasswd space open habian and press enter. Now type in a new password. I recommend using the same password as the sudo password. So type it in and press enter. Then type it in again and press enter. Next, we're going to change the time zone and locale so the Raspberry Pi can set its date and time. Type in time date ctl space list dash time zones and press enter. Then use the arrow keys to scroll down through the list and find your time zone. Once you find it, highlight it and then copy or remember it. Then press Ctrl Z on your keyboard to exit. Type in sudo space time date ctl space set dash time zone space Europe slash Berlin, but replace the Europe slash Berlin part with your time zone, then press enter. Then type time date CTL and press enter to check the time zone. So now type in sudo space reboot and press enter. You might have to type in the sudo password and press enter. Your Raspberry Pi should reboot. Next we are going to test out the MQTT server we just set up. So once it is done rebooting, go to mqttfx.org or click the link on the website guide. Once on the website, press download mqtt.fx. Then click on the one below latest version. It will take you to a new page. Click on the file that suits your windows. The first one is 64-bit and the second one is 32-bit. It will start downloading. Once it downloads, open up File Explorer and go to your downloads folder. Double click on mqttfx with the ending windows. Click run. Then when the other box comes up, click yes. Click next three times and then click finish. Go to your search bar or wherever your applications are and look for MQTT effects and then double click on it to open the program. 
This is now a good time to explain what this is. This is a program that tests MQTT stuff so you can debug it and see if it's working. Click on the gear at the top, change the broker address to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Mine is 192.168.0.4 and make sure the port is 1883. Then at the bottom click apply, then click cancel. Now click connect. If it connects successfully and there is a green circle in the top right, then you are good. Go over to the subscribe tab and type in the pound symbol and then press subscribe. Then in the publish tab type in hi in the field and then in the big box type in hello world. Then hit publish. Then go back to the subscribe tab and if you see hello world then we are very good. We successfully set up the MQTT server. Now let's connect the MQTT server to open up. So go to open up your web browser and go to your Pi IP address colon 8080. Replace the your Pi IP address with your Pi's IP address. Mine is 192.168.0.4 colon 8080. Then click paper UI. Paper UI is the web administration panel for the automation server. In the left column, go to add-ons. In the search box, type in MQTT. Next to where it says MQTT binding, click install and wait for it to install. Then go back and SSH into the Raspberry Pi again using PuTTY. Type in sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash openamp2 forward slash services forward slash mqtt.cfg and press enter. The only thing we are going to do is change the server or URL to our broker. So delete the line pound side bracket broker right side bracket dot URL equals TCP colon forward slash forward slash left side bracket hosts right side bracket colon 1883 and replace it with broker dot URL equals TCP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.4 colon 1883 but change the IP address to match your Raspberry Pi's IP. Press Ctrl X on your keyboard and then press Y, then press Enter to save. Congratulations, we have now set up the OpenAB2 home automation server with MQTT. What we did is set the groundwork and the structure for the rest of the OpenAB2 and our MQTT devices. In the next videos after the final installation of this server, we will talk about creating the interface for our smart home system in OpenAB2 as well as the rules for automation. Alright, thank you for watching and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below or head over to the mksmarthouse.com forum where you have a better chance of it getting answered. Goodbye.